Are you doing the Cardi B up, the Flamingo, the Sweeper, the Sweeper and the Flamingo together? That means your stand throw is in dire straits and you need to not do what I'm gonna talk about in this video, so check it out. It's Eric Johnson from Air Today Throws Nation. In today's video, we are going to talk about Discus 101, the stand throw. Some people refer to it as a power throw or a press throw. I call it the stand throw. That's what we've called it for years because we're just standing at the front of the ring setting up. Now, this video is going to be a little different in the sense that if you are doing any of the things we're going to talk about in this video, we're going to talk about the Cardi B, the up. Are you, gonna, are you doing that? Don't do that. We're gonna talk about the Flamingo and the Floor Sweeper. Don't do any of these things. If you are doing any of these things, you need to watch this video, pay close attention, and stop right away. If you see coaches teaching what I'm about to coach, coaches, tell other coaches, please stop. This isn't about how I'm gonna get an advantage because these guys are doing it so badly. We need to help our sport get kids back in the groove after this COVID mess. And so we are gonna talk about three Three things that you absolutely don't want to do. So number one is the Cardi B. So what we're going to tell why is that? So what is that? We're going to start here and you're going to see me winding up and then if it's up then it's stuck. Okay so that is my attempt at humor and I'm not super funny uh, unless I'm <laughs> writing stuff. So here's the deal. If you are doing a stand throw and you're bringing the discus up and you're bringing it down, you're bringing it up and you're bringing it down. First of all, this is how is something gonna come here and come here and come here and then go far that way. It's totally movement that is completely wasted and it's something you wanna do. So looking at it when you see guys come up and they come mm. down and they come up and they come down. First of all, that's the complete opposite, right? What we wanna see is we have, an, we have an orbit that's going this way, so we're not throwing this way, right? So if it goes up, guess what happens? You come back and it goes up again. So when we throw up in the air, we don't fly the discus, and that is the first thing that you wanna see to avoid, right? Again, we were recent, been to multiple track meets recently, and these are many of the mistakes that I'm seeing young throwers make. And I'm seeing some coaches actually coaching kids to do some of the things I'm mentioning in this thing. So here's what I always say about that. I know that their intentions are good. They want to see their athletes do well, but unfortunately, they just don't understand what's happening with the event. And that's what our throwing chain reaction system teaches you all about action reaction, right? So we talk about setting up a chain reaction. So if I'm going up and I'm doing this, I'm basically throwing like this. And we don't throw up in the sky. The distance or the goal of the discus is to get the implement as far away as possible. And so that's what we're gonna do. So rather than being here, we're supposed to be here so that we can pull the discus across, get our hips through, right? Lower body, upper body. And that's what's gonna be really important. So remember, first thing, the Cardi B, the up, up and it's stuck. So if I'm coming up and down, up and down, there's so many things going wrong here. The chain reaction is completely inaccurate. So you're not gonna defy physics. So you're gonna be moving the discus this way and then you're gonna somehow come across and try to throw far. There's no benefit to this. So that's number one, don't do that. Number two, we're gonna talk about the, the flamingo. The flamingo is when you're setting up and you don't know how to set up, and then the athletes bring the discus and they might get it somewhat to the high point, and then they throw and they get the flamingo leg. And so when we hit this and we come through and we're doing this, we're upper body dominant, we have the wrong orbit, we have the wrong radius, and if you don't understand what these terms mean, this is something you need to dig into. Click the link in the description for the throwing chain reaction. We got a bunch of free stuff. We got a bunch of videos on the channel. Be sure to comment anything you'd like to see, but check that out because you need to know what all these things are. So the flamingo is all too common. You see kids doing this where they come off of the one leg and the leg comes up and they're in that flamingo leg position. And this is one of the things you want to do. Now, next thing I see is the floor sweeper. So like the up, now you've got the get it down to the ground. We're gonna sweep the floor 
and we are getting some kind of a high point, but again, without athletes realizing it, this is it. So if you tuned into this video and you saw me say, okay, here's how we're gonna do a stand throw, and we're gonna have you set up here, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna take that discus and you're gonna bring it down here, and we're gonna bring it here, and we're gonna get it low, and then we're gonna throw, and that, is a disaster okay because again you're not understanding the angles that are happening we have a high point we have our low point here we're counterbalanced we have our block leg and we have to come around and we have to work in here so that floor sweeper is tr changing the orbit and again like the up where you've got this type of position mm -hmm. now you're bending over hips are coming out of the position and you're coming here and you're doing this thing and then what happens is kids do this, they come up, it becomes very upper body dominant, and we're running into a whole host of problems. So you don't wanna do the floor sweeper. Now, we can take it a whole nother level. We can exacerbate the floor sweeper with the flamingo and the floor sweeper all combined, where we're gonna come down, wind low, wind low, kind of somewhat to a high point, and then we're gonna flamingo throw, okay? So, you can see how these things are what, unfortunately, I didn't see with one athlete, I've seen with all kinds of athletes. And if you go to most track meets at any weekend track meet across the country, youth, high school, you're gonna see a lot of these mistakes. So remember, if you're setting up and you're winding the discus, you don't know how to do this. And we're gonna talk about another video, all the other things that we're seeing cupping problems, holding it, all these things that are also affecting and kind of lead to this. So we're gonna talk about this, but first and foremost, let's talk about the stand throw, okay? So what is a stand throw or a power? What we're doing is we're setting up our chain reaction and we're setting up our movement and we need to be long and level and you're gonna notice how my hips are really under my shoulders but my whole body is on the angle. That's what's really important. When we're getting to this point, we're able to bring the discus around and finish up this way. We're avoiding that flamingo leg and what we're doing is pushing our hips through, feeling ourselves come into a block, right? We have to stop everything and whip the upper body into the throw and that's what's really important. So when we're doing this, up motion, right? We are getting this type of motion and we can't bring that around. We can never get the lower body ahead and this is gonna cost you a lot of distance, especially when you start getting to the full throw. Now here's the thing. A lot of you out there are doing these four things that we're talking about in this video. You're either doing one or maybe you're doing combination like the flamingo and the sweeper, right? So what we wanna do is that if you're doing this, you have to understand those things are incorrect and I just explained why. And what we wanna do is have you learn more about how to do things correctly. So. That's what we have, the throwing chain reaction system. We break everything down into six pillars so that you understand and learn quickly. We teach our throwers very quickly how to move. If you're doing a stand throw in a competition, that is unfortunate because you're going to throw less distance than you would with a qualified full throw. Now your first full throw may not be the prettiest throw right away, but the thing that you wanna be really concerned with is that this is progress. So it might not be the greatest movement, but in two or three or four weeks, it's gonna be superior to just that stand throw. You're gonna be picking up a lot more distance. And we have a lot of athletes who are first time throwers who are doing full throws and it's the movement is there and it's about building for the second year and the third year and the fourth year. And if even if this is your first year, you're gonna have a much higher probability of throwing greater distance by doing a full throw. So. It starts out, if you're doing these things, one, you don't have any information, watch more videos like this, look at the videos on our channel. We try to put out a lot of good common sense tips to help you guys. And for those of you guys who wanna really dig in, your coaches, coaches out there that you really wanna learn and dive in, that's why we have the Throwing Chain Reaction System so that you can actually put this information together and teach your athletes how to get better faster. And if you're coaching yourself, same thing. So, that being said, let's just review real quick. Avoid the up, the Cardi B. We're gonna avoid the, the floor sweeper coming down, coming down like this. Again, you're gonna notice these are orbit and radius issues and angle issues. And then you're gonna notice that when we throw out of these and we do the flamingo where the foot's coming off the ground because the upper body's too dominant, we're sequencing incorrectly. And then when you combine the sweeper to the flamingo, that is gonna be 
just leaving tons of distance. Here instead is what you want to see. Rather than wind up, wind generally pretty level, gradually to a high point, have this nice counterbalance. Notice how I'm going to be loaded and notice how there's not a lot of weight on this leg which is called my block. So then what we're going to do is we're going to be able to come here and we're going to feel this coming up, rotating around, feeling the block leg, feeling the block arm, feeling the hip come through and then the the delivery arm comes through and this will lead to feeling how to reverse that we will save for another video but hopefully you guys or if you're doing any of these things that I talked about that you shouldn't be doing stop now try to pay attention to the end where we show you the basics look through our channel and subscribe to Airtate Throws Nation TV check out AirtateThrowsNation.com and we will help you throw farther faster. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. As you can see, there's a lot that goes into what we do with the Throwing Chain Reaction System. If you would like to learn more about how to structure your practices and find the things that help unlock your potential, click the link below and we will see you on the next video.